Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this hour. We thank you right now, Lord God, that you are in our midst. And as we bring forth the word of God, may this word educate, illuminate, and change lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for taking a stand. And we thank you, Lord God, that greater is you that is within us than you that he that is within the world. So we praise you today. We thank you today. We thank you for living the lives of overcomers today. And we're asking you to continue to bless us and keep us. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Go with me, if you will, to the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, the seventh chapter. I'm reading from the NSRV today, the New Revised Standard Version. Isaiah 7, beginning at the 10th verse. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol, or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Hmm. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David. It is too little for you weary mortals that you weary my God also. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a son. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall call him Emmanuel. So all the scriptures. Prophet Isaiah was the consistent voice in the ears of Israel and Judah, speaking of the disappointment of the Lord concerning their inconsistency in leading other nations to the true and living God, and away from the idolatry and worship of false gods while corrupting their own values. You can't touch a dirty thing and not get dirty. I got to say that again. You cannot touch a dirty thing and not get dirty. You can't play in the mud and not get mud on you. Okay, I'm going to leave that right there. I can preach on that one all day. But just remember that. During the season of Advent, which means arrival or coming, the messages of hope, peace, joy, and love, we have purposely tried to reinforce the true meaning of Christmas. We've said before, it's not what other folks have made it. It is not the commercialized efforts of people to make money. People who don't necessarily have a lot of money spending a lot of money just to prove that they love somebody. Before we arrive at our pericope or text, in the middle of the chapter, where we were, at the beginning of chapter 7, we meet King Ahaz, 12th king of the separate kingdom of Judah, son of Jotham, son of Uzziah. Not much is written about Ahaz in his reign of 16 years, but we know that he was given to idolatrous propensities, even copying a heathen altar, and had one built in Jerusalem. His body was not even buried in the sacred sepulchres or tombs of the greater recognized kings. You can't. Play with people with dirty hands and not get dirty. Okay, the Lord just dropped that on me, so this is free. When we meet King Ahaz in our text, he is in the, in the middle of a situation where King Raisin of Syria and Pekah, the son of Ramalia, king of Israel, 
join forces to go up against Jerusalem, scaring the people of Judah and their king. Isaiah was sent out to meet Ahaz to reassure him that he had nothing to fear. Now, we need to talk about fear a little bit. Fear is the great enemy of the believer, causing stress and much strength. It is crippling to faith, which is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Fear is a dream killer and is poisonous, like the venom of a snake. If we are to be more than conquerors, as we often speak of, we must defeat fear. And so it was and so it is in war. While it is wise to acknowledge your enemy's strength, because it's helpful to know where he or she is coming from, you must, you must be able to recognize the plans of the enemy. I must, you must, overcome the fear of failure while recognizing that the tools that you have in your toolkit. What do you mean by tools in a toolkit? I don't have a toolkit. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. And let me let me just break it down just a little bit. Moses had a staff. Young David had some smooth stones. Samson had some awesome strength. Solomon had wisdom. And you, 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 and you have some gifts and tools that you have yet to untap. Meaning that there are some things that are in you, that God placed in you, so that when you come up against the enemy, you have something to fight with. You may look at your hands and say, my hands are empty. Well, yeah, your hands are empty, but God's put something in your mind. Amen. Hallelujah. In the hands of these, this organ and these drums, when these two people get on the organ and the drum, they have tools to make the sad heart merry with their playing. You see, there are gifts that you have, and sometimes you haven't even recognized that you have. Mm. I can't even encourage somebody today. Now, Ahaz had taken the weight and the fears of the people and then mixed them with his own. You realize when you are fearful and you share your feelings with somebody else, and they say, yeah, I'm scared too. Now you got twice as scared people dealing with something that they need. Somebody needs to have some strength and somebody needs to have some courage. Otherwise, you're all like the blind, leading the blind, you're all falling in the ditch. So, you got to avoid that. So, if you meet Chicken Little, who tells you that the sky is falling, don't embrace that thought. But do your research to see is it see if it's true. And then avoid chicken little. Because somebody has to figure out the next steps. But if both of you are running around crazy, well, you get the picture. Yeah. So when Ahaz meets the prophet, he has crazy doubt because fear is a manipulator. It can compromise you and weaken your path to success. Isaiah tells the king, don't worry about a thing because every little thing is going to be all right. Yes. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it. The plans of King Raisin and Pico will not work. This is not a parable. This is not a riddle, but a direct word from the Lord. These two guys will not hurt you, says the Lord. One thing we need to know is we need to understand when God is speaking. Amen. Sometimes we get lost and we are having problems maybe recognizing the voice. But when you learn to recognize the voice of the Lord, you need to then embrace what God is saying. 
It wasn't dropped on you by an accident. Next, Ahaz is told through the prophet to ask for a sign. Meaning if you have any doubt, ask me for something. And I will reassure you that I am the Lord and here for you. Often, whether we want to admit it or not, the, the faithful will have doubt. Not necessarily in the Lord, but in their own ability to see God in a thing. See, you got to see God in a thing. When you say that you're God's child, then you have to learn to see God in a thing. You can't just ignore what you see now because you are God's child. You are God's property. You've got to see God in a thing. Because God is making a way that you can see yeah. what you have been asking for. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, somebody said, well, what is our thought for the day? It's waiting for a sign. Oh, waiting for a sign. See God in a thing. Low self-esteem and disbelief that God has found them worthy. Maybe it's from all the years the important people in your life told you that you would never make it. That you weren't talented enough. But I brought news to you today that God is waiting for ordinary you to be transformed into extraordinary you. Remodeling your DNA, if it will, so that no one else can get the credit. After all, they wrote you all. But God. Amen. But God. Amen. But God. But God. I have a friend that says, she talks about big God. When you tell it to big God, God's got it in control. So we need to trust in our God. Ahaz said, I'm on ask. I'm not testing God. And somebody says, well, that sounds like he's just being humble and he's being modest. Not like Job, who said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. But displaying more of the doubt found in Gideon, in questioning God in Judges 6. Seeing that Ahaz won't allow his faith to grow and trust God, Isaiah then pivots. And then speaks to the house of David. Because sometimes you got to know when somebody's not receiving you and you got a word from the Lord, you got to go and tell somebody what God said. I don't care if you got to run out in the backyard and cry out to the sky. Somebody needs to know that God said it and I'm bringing it out right amen, now. Amen, amen. Yeah. Talk to the house of David. And he says, listen up. I can't make you a king except the blessing. But here, house of David, your time is coming. Here is your sign. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son and will call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Well, I almost gave up on this text, to be honest, because I kept reading it and I kept going, ah, what, what does this have to do with Jesus? And then, I'm looking for a connection, and then it hit me that not everyone will catch the vision. They won't catch my vision, they won't catch your vision. But when the Lord has spoken it, his word said in Isaiah 55 and 11, it says, so my word will be that go forth out of my mouth. Hmm. Then it says, it will not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and shall prosper the thing where I send it. So God has not given a word that will go out and then come back. God is sending out a word that will reach its destination. You just have to know if it bounces on somebody else, you got to be ready to accept what God said to you. Jews didn't want to accept Jesus? That's all right. Gentiles ready and wait. We'll accept. We'll accept. We'll take all your leftover blessings. We'll take all your rejected blessings and we're going to do something with it. So look for a sign, my brothers and my sisters. Although others say, stop wasting your time on your son and daughter, they are lost. 
But since you planted a seed in them, you have expectations yeah. and look for a sign. Yeah. Because if the Lord told you it's going to happen, it's going to happen. You think grand, great grandma, grandma prayed, mom prayed, daddy prayed, and nothing happened? You think just because they went to the grave that their prayers did too? I got news for you. I don't pray in vain. That if it takes a while, that if it takes a little longer than I am able to see, I believe God that God will answer my prayer. I believe that the prayers of the righteous avail much. I believe that God has seen my struggles. He has seen that I have walked up rightly before him. He has seen that I put out my petition and that I believe by faith that God is doing what I ask God to do. So it may not happen today, it may not happen tomorrow, but I know that the Lord will make it happen. How many times have you heard your mama's voice, your daddy's voice, and they've been going a long time, and something comes over you and say, they said that to me a long time ago. Well, that is a sign of answered prayer. They told you there'd be days like this. There'll be days like this, my mama said. Well, the Lord is doing this right now to let you know if you're waiting on a sign that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that you can ask for thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You think that their prayers died because they died. Yeah. Well, the devil is a liar. Yeah. And your life yeah. right here yeah. and right now yeah. out of all you've been through yeah. is a sign that God answers prayer. Yeah. That prayer that probably went something like this. Oh Lord, bless my children, my grandchildren, and even those I'll never meet. I know that my Redeemer lives and is sure, and is sure as I'm praying this prayer that there will be a time that God Forget my petition that God will answer the prayer that God will see fit and you're standing there you're looking like boo boo the fool cause you said I don't know what's going on but I came to tell you that God has made it so said I heard grandma's prayer grandma was a believer Who didn't have two pennies to rub together 
way back when. But God, but God, but God said, ask for a sign. And now I'm waiting for the sign. I'm waiting for the sign. I'm waiting for the manifestation that the Lord is still doing great things. And that somebody will say no sense in having the freedom and then not having the inheritance to go with it. Ah, uh, but I keep seeing a sign with every black billionaire and millionaire that God keeps God's promise. Watch and see that for every Jefferson who moves on up to the east side to a deluxe apartment in the sky, there's also a Smith, there's a Jackson, there's a Johnson, and all them other folk, like I said earlier, becoming a nurse, becoming a doctor, becoming an entrepreneur, an answer to the prayers of the ancestors, waiting on a sign. Well, the house of David didn't know when the child was going to be born, or who the virgin was, or if he would be born in their lifetime. But the prophet said it on behalf of the Lord. And that settled it. Ahaz was compromised. But there was somebody in the house of David that kept praying. Even when Ahaz was messing up, there was somebody in the house of David who was on their knees who was saying, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help and my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Keep looking that God is sending a sign. Oh, I, I don't know what to believe. I'm telling you today, keep looking for a sign. You might have passed over it, but allow the Holy Spirit to take you back. And the Holy Spirit will say, well, look over there. What's that under that pile of papers? Say, I didn't see that earlier. He said, well, that's a sign. And then when you open the envelope, that is a sign that God, that God, that God has not forgotten you. That when you hear the bell ring, and when you hear a knock on the door, and your son or your daughter shows up, that's a sign that they're ready to hear from you. They might have said, Mama, go on, get out of here. Daddy, I don't want to hear what you got to say. But when you hear that knock on the door, it means God has prepared the heart. And now they are waiting to receive what you have to say. Is there a word from the Lord? Yes, there is a word from the Lord. There's a sign, and you have to learn to read the signs. Hallelujah. Look for a sign today, child of God. And you don't have to look far, because the Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe. Only believe. Only
Let's go. 